Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm it's Robbie Rhino, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the recently released Soviet Tier 8 Premium Medium Tank, the K91 version 2. I'll tell you what this tank costs, I'll show you the tank statistics, my equipment and commander setup, and then we'll head off into some gameplay to replace for you. I'll try and show you what this tank is capable of. So we're going to go on down now to the price. And as expected, because it's recently released, it's going to be relatively expensive. You have the Prime Bundle with a lot of sort of extras in it for 14,400 gold. You have the Fully Loaded for 11,350. The Loaded for 10,000 and the Base Tank on its own for 8,650. And with the abundance of tier 8 premium tanks in the game, you're going to want to make sure this is the one for you. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the future this tank will be, you know, on on sale or a personal offer or something or it'd be on discount you know next summer or next christmas or something so yeah bear in mind that you might be able to get this cheaper but if you really want this now then of course pick it up and enjoy it so we're going to have a little look at the tank characteristics now it plays up to tier 10 has a 10 percent xp bonus earn and a 50 percent silver bonus earn which is very nice it has 1,350 hit points, which is really sort of quite standard for uh, for tier 8 medium tanks. Uh, it has a 380 meters view range, which isn't too bad. You can get that up to a fairly decent level, especially for a Soviet uh, medium tank at tier 8. Mobility wise, it's really, really nice news for this tank. It's got a 904. Uh, 930 sorry horsepower engine which gives it a power to weight ratio of 19.58 so it gets around the battlefield nice and quickly 55 kilometers an hour top speed forwards and a 23 kilometers an hour top speed backwards the turret traverse is nice at 40 degrees a second but the hull traverse is even better at 44 degrees a second meaning you can keep up with pretty much every tank on the battlefield when they're trying to outmaneuver you um, armor wise the only thing to sort of mention I think is the turret armor and I'll just head into tanks GG and show you so on the turret you have 200 at the front 100 at the sides and 60 at the rear obviously it's a very strange looking tank fairly low profile but uh, side on it's a quite large sort of target um, but this turret as you can see a lot of red it's a very very nice turret um, you're sort of looking at dead on if you're not using your gun depression effective armor ranges from sort of 183 millimeters to 200 millimeters on this capola here there is a small weak spot here as you can see just here but it can be hard to hit if you are moving about on a ridge line sort of dead on you're looking at between 220 to 370 meters uh, millimeter sorry of armor on its turret sort of straight on and if you're using you're the full extent of the gun depression and you're aiming up at this tank it ranges sort of yeah from anything from 240 to 400 millimeters plus in some sort of uh, parts of the turret and obviously if you wiggle a little bit and you're angling from side to side yeah those ranges can go up even more just saw 700 there which is quite crazy for a tier 8 uh, medium tank um, lower plate wise yeah you're looking at sort of 150 to 180 millimeters a lower plate depending on whether you sort of angle and uh, how far away you are from your opponents and yeah what sort of angle they hit their shots at um, upper plate is from about you know 190 to 280 depending on you know how much you angle and of course if you're angling this much then yeah, you're most likely going to be exposing your side, but you might get nice ricochets when people are shooting on the move and you're on the move and that kind of thing. And if you're side scraping, it's not too bad because of the 80 millimeters. These would be an auto ricochet at this sort of angle, but do bear in mind you have these like cheeks here that are weak. Um, and yeah, they're sort of about 140 to 160 millimeters. Uh, millimeters of effective armor so if someone's side scraping against you in a k91 version 2 just sort of shoot here sort of above the tracks there and you're going to be able to pen it and even uh yeah just for the top of the tracks there you're going to be able to penetrate but yeah if it's using this gun depression you can't see its upper or lower plate there's this little weak point here and this little top bit of the cupola just around here they aren't too hard if you're sort of looking straight on like this but if you're fighting it and it's using its gun depression then it might be a little bit uh, harder to 
penetrate. Uh, so yeah, it's a very sort of tough turret. It's quite a durable medium tank I found. Uh, that's if you're exposing your turret. If you're exposing your sides, the sort of rear of your turret and that kind of thing, and your lower and upper plate, then yeah, you're going to be battered through by pretty much everything. But it's quite effective against you know six, sevens, and eights. This turret, even quite a lot of nines, and against sort of tier tens, you still have to be wary. But you might get the odd miracle bounce. It's a really weird shaped tank, and yeah, quite unique, I think. So yeah, we'll head on and back over to the statistics of this tank. And the gun is what everybody wants to know about. So this gun, it is a 100mm gun, fires 7.23 rounds a minute with 250 alpha damage on its standard rounds and its uh, heat rounds with 212mm of penetration on its standard and 290 on its heat rounds, which is really, really nice for tier 8. That's going to butter through a lot of tanks that you're going to meet even at tier 10. The HE is 330 alpha damage with 50 millimeters of penetration. You have a base aim time of 2.2 seconds and a base accuracy of 0.35. The aim time isn't too bad, but the accuracy isn't brilliant. So you're going to want to try and get these down with good commander and equipment set up. And the base reload is 8.3 seconds, which, yeah, it's not too bad. The worst thing about this tank I found, though, is the gun depression at 5 degrees. It can be quite awkward to use this amount of gun depression on a lot of ridge lines in the game. But the elevation, you know, is acceptable at 20 degrees. And it also carries 55 rounds of ammunition. So that's plenty for you to be getting on with. The DPM of this tank is 1807 base, so it's not brilliant, but it's not too bad. And if you're using your gun depression in the armor, you're going to do pretty well in this tank. So I'm just going to tell you about my commander and equipment setup now. I use on my equipment advanced loader, advanced optics and gun stabilizer. And on my commander, I run six cents, born leader, rapid loading, steady aim, rapid aim, snapshot run and gun, situational awareness, and I actually use Adrenaline Rush because this is my Object 140 crew. And yeah, I want to get that DPM even when I'm, you know, one shot and I'm pretty much out of the battle. I want to make my DPM as much as possible to try and stay in the battle. But I think something like track mechanic, firefighting or camouflage expertise probably is a better shout, especially if maybe you are a newer player. Uh, just a quick note on my statistics of the tank now. I have a concealment rating of 318 meters, which isn't too bad. It's not too bad for a tank of this sort of size. And I now have a view range of 464 meters, which is really, really nice. So that's enough about the tank. Let's head into the replays and I'll show you what it's capable of. So we're now into the first replay of the video and we're here on Prokhorovka, which is one of my favorite maps. It gives me a lot of opportunity to use my fairly decent view range my pretty nice mobility and it allows me to get onto this ridge line on the sort of E, F line and yeah spot out and use my nice turret armor. So what do I think about this tank and whether it's worth it? Well it's always worth um, what it is to you uh, and how much you need the tank yourself or how much you like it yourself. Um, obviously it's going to be different for everyone. I'd say this is you know a fairly solid pretty good all-round uh, performer it performs exceptionally well when you are sort of top tier like we are in this battle um, because you have you know a little bit more penetration than something like a t54 mod 1 or a t44 100 uh, it's very nice because it has apcr as standard which means you have a, a faster shell velocity than like an ap round usually and on this tank the shell velocity is 1105 I believe on its APCR, uh, it's 1150 sorry and it's 980 meters a second on its heat. Um, so that's very nice, unfortunately it only has that 5 degrees of gun depression meaning that it can be quite awkward to use on some of the ridge lines as you can see here I'm trying to find the sort of uh, the, the more flatter parts of this ridge so I can go hold down um, there are some dips that I won't be able to use a little bit further to my left and right just as artillery likes to pepper me um, but yeah as you can see it's quite a uh, it's quite usable if you find the right positions and you know about them uh, something like a T54 mod 1 or a T44 100 has about yeah, 7 degrees of gun depression so that might be more flexible for you 
but bear in mind that they don't have as good penetration as this tank. They only have um, 190 on their standard and 100, 247 on their premium, whereas this also has that lovely 290 heat penetration, which is going to be really useful when you are bottom tier coming up against tier 9s and 10s. But yeah, I, I think it's one of those tanks that if you're looking for a Soviet medium tank, if you're looking for something that's quite durable, that has good penetration, standard rounds or APCR, has nice turret armor, then this could be the one for you. Uh, obviously, well, not obviously, but for me, things do seem quite expensive now when you consider that you can get Cold War premiums for just a, a couple thousand more gold and they rake in a lot more silver. Um, I don't know. Do you think that that makes tier 8 premiums redundant? I if you're using them solely for grinding silver, perhaps, but of course not everyone plays Cold War, and uh, yeah, if you're looking for a silver maker, this won't be too bad, it's not going to be as good as something like the, the you know, the Ragnarok, that kind of, uh, is it the Crimson tanks that make like 60 or 65% silver or whatever it is, something crazy, and um, yeah, but it's still going to make you a fairly decent amount of silver, and because it has that little bit extra penetration than something like a a T-54 Mod 1 or Volk, or the Volk T-4100 or the standard T-44-100, you, uh, you don't have to fire you know, as many gold rounds, and when you do, you're pretty much guaranteed to be penetrating if you aim well, because it has 290 millimeters of penetration, so yeah, it's completely up to you. I think it's... I prefer this than T-54 Mod 1. It's a bit frustrating because of the gun depression, but I personally prefer it because of the, the shell velocity on the APCR, which is a standard, and the turret armor, and the mobility is really, really nice. It's it's a lot more mobile than those other two tanks that I have sort of compared this to. And yeah, I recommend it. Maybe not for the price it is now. Tanks usually, you know, go on sale or they come as personal offers eventually. And uh, yeah, it's up to you, but I wouldn't say it's a bad tank if you get it. You won't be like completely disappointed, um, but it might not be, you know, the most competitive tank. But having said that, let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. So I'm just using this ridge line to pop over and get shots at whatever is spotted. Um, I'm in a nice position here where I can use my turret armor to its full effect. I'm um, using my five degrees of gun depression, so when they're aiming at me, I'm going to be having that really nice turret armor effective angling. I do have to be a little bit careful of like overexposing. Um, when I do have to overexpose or I'm trying to shoot this left hand side, as you can see I'm using the rock as my cover. Uh, not not the wrestler, this actual rock right beside me. Um, <laughs> that's so I don't get spotted. And if you heard it me laugh at my own joke then, uh, yeah, I can only, uh, only apologise. But yeah, this is a really powerful position. Uh, you can sort of rotate around either to your left or right. You can get shots down the 1-2 line and you can also move a little bit further over and get shots at the hill and as you can see apart from me nearly rolling my tank I am trying to relocate as often as possible just to try and stop the artillery shooting at me he's had quite a few swings at me he managed to hit me twice now I believe and yeah I'm just gonna try and keep moving to lower the possibility of the art there he goes again of trying to hit me and just gonna keep rinsing and repeating and getting shots in where I can uh, the DPM Obviously isn't the best at tier 8, but it's not the worst, and having said that, I'm not in a position at the moment to be able to sit there on the ridgeline and constantly fire every single time that I'm reloaded because of the artillery and because, yeah, I'm just going to be pounded from the back by the, the tank destroyers that are no doubt sort of parked in uh, J and K1 and 2 sort of area down the one line. I'm just trying to make people aware that you know there's artillery down there and that if they spot up that sort of corner on the bridge I might be able to have shots in. Uh, we've had a fairly decent game so far. We picked up 3.4k damage, a direct damage and 209 assistance so it's not too bad. Still got 523 hit points to play with and I'm just sort of trying to pick my moment when I feel comfortable to go over this ridge line and sort of push the tempo and I feel like now is the, now is the play. I've sort of sat still for a little bit uh, longer than I sort of wanted to, you know, I've sat still for around sort of one and a half minutes and I feel like if that's kind of a benchmark for me to move on then that's a pretty good benchmark and I'm just going to use these ridge lines to advance towards the camping positions down in the, in the bottom of the one line there in uh, K1. As you can see I'm fired nicely on the move there so the accuracy is really really nice when you have a good commander and equipment set up. 
fortunate that this autoloader, the general, comes after me and uh, manages to miss two of his shots. I'm going to try and track him on the ridge line there, but I free aim that and it doesn't track him, but I do get a nice penetrating shot. I do have to be wary that he's going to be reloaded in about 15 seconds or so, uh, so I'm going to try and pop over and finish him off there. And now it's just this Minotaur and a uh, light tank that are both in this corner, I believe. And I want to try and get there first, so even if I do get shut down, because I have a one shot, I want to pick up the assistance for spotting them. But fortunately for me, the Minotaur gets spotted. And fortunately for me, he's turned away so I can get a shot into his rear. And now it's just this LH MTV on the, uh, on the enemy team, the British tier 8 light tank and I'm kind of confident that I might even be able to bounce off of my hull unless he hits my lower plate so I'm just wiggling as you can see when I'm driving forward I'm boosting my combat rations so I can enhance my view range that little bit more and if you look at my view range cone compared to my uh, sort of camo circle then you can see it's actually got a fairly decent sort of ratio towards uh, the yeah the camo to view range ratio and you can outspot quite a lot of tanks uh, with this premium and yeah it's quite useful so as this tank's coming over the ridge I aim a shot right into the track he swivels round misses a shot we pick up a nice damage in the shot I believe and yeah and the assistance for the creature finishing off that light tank so we have a nice round there on Prokhorovka three kills finish MVP 4.4k direct damage 447 assistance damage we get the high caliber confederate and first class and pick up 1713 base experience points and yeah a really nice game picking up a hundred thousand silver so that's it for this game we'll head on into the second replay of the video which is slightly better and we'll see how i get on there so see you in a bit so we're now into the second replay of the video we're here on redshire which is another nice open map for me to be able to use my nice mobility my good view range my good turret armor yeah, and I'm going to head on over right at the start of this battle to the central sort of hill area. So from my spawn, that's in F4. Going to see if I can spot anything crossing towards the north. Uh, a lot of tanks like to cross over in the north towards the brawling area to the east of this map. And I'm going to see if I can spot this light tank and see what he spots. And uh, yeah, use the ridge lines to stay hidden from enemy fire and uh, you can sort of progress through these ridge lines as you go through but I do notice that this light tank is now in a sort of one-on-one -on -one engagement with the uh, enemy light tank and nothing else is spotted at the moment so I'm gonna head on over with my nice mobility <laughs> gonna pour an auto aim a shot into the side of the LTTB but he was slightly too well angled and yeah that tank's a little pest a little troll and its armor actually works quite a lot of the time um, again sort of APCR rounds anyway so unfortunately we miss our first shot but we do get a nice roll of 282 into the OTTB and make him think twice about pushing this ridge line so I'm just trying to protect my light tank and protect this area here I'm being targeted and although I am on a down slope which is my intention to try and avoid the the shell arc and the trajectory of the artillery uh, you never know they might get lucky and still hit me so I'm just trying to stay moving I'm going to keep trying to pop up and see if I can spot anything camping at sort of D4 uh, a lot of tank destroyers like to sit on that hill and if I push forward here sometimes you can get shots at the sort of heavy brawling area in the east sort of around E9 uh, E0 so I'm just going to try and take sort of pop shots where I can at the start of this game uh, unfortunately we missed the LTTB there and yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see if I can try and spot things out, try and get a, a lay of the land if that makes sense, because a lot of the enemy tanks aren't spotted, so I'm not too sure where to go and where to progress just at the moment. I'm gonna wait to see if I spot them or my team spots them, and then I can adjust my sort of plays accordingly. I don't want to rush in right at the moment and lose all my hit points straight straight away. But I noticed that this side there are some tanks that have been spotted. I was going to try and track that Emil on that hill just as he falls back, but unfortunately he fell back and uh, yeah, we didn't fire and unfortunately he takes out two of my teammates. But we're going to stay calm and we're going to try and use this location here. Um, it's got some little ridge lines in front of me so I'm able to try and use my gun depression as best as I can. Um, unfortunately, 
some of the tanks might have shots there. You can see there's a little gap between that rock and this ridge, so when I'm falling backwards they might get a shot into my hole, but I'm just trying to minimise the chance that the enemy have of getting shots into my lower plate, into my upper hole, and I'm trying to just give them my turret. We overextend there, and you can see that that tier 6, that's no problem, firing right into my side, absolutely no problem at all. We get a nice shot into the uh, turret there, the KV-85, showing that this tank has, you know, it's not too bad penetration on its standard rounds. It's not the best, but it's certainly a lot better than one, the 190 you get on the T-54 Mod 1, the Motherland, or the T-44-100, or the Volk T-44-100, which are all pretty much the same tank anyway. Um, but yeah, we're just going to stay on this ridge line and try and take out the tanks that are crossing down that one line if we can. We've had a fairly decent start to this game with 1000 damage and 142 assistance. But I'm just going to stay calm. I don't want to play too aggro right here. I want to try and get shots into these tanks where I can. And fortunately that 45 TP just stops in time for my shell to hit him. I thought he was going to stop and do a little bit of the, the Matrix style Neo dodging there. But fortunately we get the, the shell in. And again we're just trying to get shots in where we can. Uh, trying to limit the possibility of the artillery shooting us by getting as close to the bottom of this uh, ridge line, bottom of this hill as possible and uh, I don't feel like I've got too much support here so I'm going to try and go round this way and just push over with this uh, tank destroyer. Fortunately he only does 200, and 200 odd damage with the HE but we're going to get behind this Emil now and uh, get shot after shot into the rear of this Emil. I'm trying to put this Emil off, we'll try and track him with that nudge there so that he doesn't get round the back of my, uh, I think it's the uh, the new tier 8 um, in the Sturm Tiger line, I've completely forgotten the name um, Sturm Tiger P, something like that <laughs> um, get a shot into the T78, then we go forward, lurch forward and miss the second shot unfortunately but, you know, we're trying to scare these tanks off and right now I'm going to try and finish off this Emil 2 I don't know why I fired that, I knew I wouldn't be able to penetrate its turret. Um, just going to wait for my reload and then go over and aim the shot properly into the hole and finish off the Emil 1. That's a, a dangerous tank on a ridge line, great turret armour and, and an autoloader, four shot autoloader. That could have finished me off. Now we're going to go forward and take out this T-78. I feel like I have the beating of his reload. Well, it's about the same there, but fortunately we managed to get the, the killing blow. Now we're up to 3k damage. We blocked 880, which is always nice. As we get spotted there, we duck down so that T-34, I think it's 88, can get a shot into us. And now we're going to try and push over this side. Uh, there's usually a few tanks sort of straight in front of me where I'm aiming my reticle now, but there isn't. So I'm going to push up to this hill here and see if I can be the one to spot for my team. A lot of them seem to be around the back of this hill here. Or I would assume anyway because they haven't been spotted and as I go over there's the artillery and I can't resist getting a sneaky snapshot into the little piggy there at the back considering he was trying to hit me at the start of the game. I spotted this Hellcat 105 so I'm going to drop down this hill and try and get to a flatter part of the hill so I can get a shot um, using, well only exposing my turret but there's no need. <laughs> the Hellcat 105 draws right in front of us, side arm. We get the finishing blow into him and we pick up some more damage up to 3.5k and 142 assistance and there's the artillery again we're going to try and finish the artillery off but unfortunately he gets back into cover we're going to fire hit that amx 13 f3 and we get a really nice roll to finish off that artillery which is nice always nice to get an artillery out of the game and as you can see because we're on here on this ridge line spot in the enemies we're getting the assistance it's got a relatively decent camera as i said a very decent view range so we're spotting these tanks and as you can see we spotted that heavy tank without getting spotted ourselves. Uh, we're up on by three tanks, I feel like I can push now. I'm going to go up to this ridge line, just checking who I've got in support with me. I'm going to push up to this ridge line here and uh, yeah, I'm going to see how I can play uh, this last part of the battle. See if I can get this, I think it's a Barracuda, out of the game and see if I can finish off this artillery. So I, I've seen this artillery, I was thinking about going round and getting a shot, but I don't want to get shotgun and I don't want that Barracuda to come round and dump his remaining three shells in. The artillery tries to be sneaky, but fortunately we have great turret traverse, nice hole traverse, and we managed to swing around and get a snapshot finishing off that M12 and getting a Pescucci's, I believe, which is always nice. Nice to get the little piggy medal. 
So I'm just going to dip my toes into the water here, poke over and spot this Barracuda. I'm hoping my artillery lands a shell and I get the assistance for it. Um, I'm just kind of like going to be just staying out of the reach of the Barracuda and trying to sort of herd him out, kind of like a shepherd herding its flock out into the open there. And <laughs> trying to evade me, he's just driven in front of my team, you know, which is kind of what I wanted. Unfortunately, that is the gun depression there. We hit a small ridge line and our gun bounces up and we miss our auto-aim shot, which is why you should always aim your shots. But we get a second shot in and we follow up with our nice mobility for the ram kill right at the end, finishing off the Barracuda. And another fairly decent solid game where we pick up a top gun, 4.2k direct damage, 142 assistance, nearly 100,000 silver profit made. Scoochie's medal, high caliber sniper, first class, and yeah, 1,760 base experience points in a very solid tank. Uh, I wouldn't really highly recommend it, but I wouldn't put anyone off getting it. It's just a, a fairly solid performer. And yeah, you'll have to decide whether you think it's worth it. But I hope you've enjoyed this replay and this little mini review of this tank. Let me know what you think of the tank in the comments below. I hope you are all having a really nice week. I hope you all have a great Christmas. Lots more content to be coming out this week and into the new year. I'll see you on the battlefield and bye for now.